gram stain is what we use to help differentiate between two broad groups of bacteria. Uh, slides have been pre-cleaned. Okay. However, if there's some oil on the slides, it will interfere with the prep. None of your cells will stick to the slide, and that's a problem. So if you're concerned about oil being on the slide, you want to do is clean it, pre-clean it with some 95% ethanol. Grab yourself a cam wipe, put some alcohol on it, <clears throat> and wipe the so surface off real well with that alcohol, and let the alcohol evaporate dry. That should eliminate any kind of oils that might be on the surface of your slide. But again, most slides are coming pre clean If you don't put your fingers on there, you should be good to go. <clears throat> and since we're working with flames, and we'll be adding our samples aseptically, we want to make sure we wear safety glasses. Of course, your lab coat's already on. All right. So the first thing, you light your Bunsen burner. We're going to work aseptically. So light it. And of course, like all these, if they don't turn on the first time, they blow themselves out and there's too much air. Just a not down amount of air. Okay, get yourself a nice hot flame. Grab yourself a inoculating loop. And I'm going to put on two different kinds of samples, a liquid sample from a broth culture and a plate, a colony from a plate. They're, they're slightly different how you apply them to the slide. We're going to do them aseptically, so you want to work around the plane, make sure you have all the materials necessary. Okay, you want to sterilize your loop first. So the way you do that, of course, is stick it into the plane. And once the whole thing is bright red, that indicates to you visually that this is now a sterile wire. Okay. Of course, you want to let it cool down for a few seconds before you go in and take your sample. We're going to take our sample aseptically, first thing from the broth, so our sample in the broth tube. And usually it's a good idea to quickly give it a little mix before you go in. Working aseptically, meaning hold your loop like a pencil but leave those fingers free. What you want to do is grab the lid at a slight angle and open it up by the flame. So if you're at a slight angle so nothing can get in, Get in very easily. You're walking by the flames and nothing can fall down. It's that positive pressure of warm air. And the cap is not touching the ground and it's upside down so nothing can fall into it. Alright? So you want to do is play briefly, warm the air in the tube. It's not to sterilize the, the, the tube, it's to warm the air so you have a positive pressure coming out of the tube that prevents things from going in. That's part of your aseptic technique. So briefly warm the air in the tube, go in to your sample. Take a loop full of broth, pull it out, flame the opening again, put the cap on, put the tube down, and then go into your slide and place your loop full material on your slide. Okay? And you don't need to spread this out very much. A broth is not very concentrated, so you don't really need to spread it out very much. Now we need to prevent aerosols. And the way we prevent aerosols is to heat the loop up outside the flame until you see no more liquid in the loop. Okay, so you want to do that by putting the wire part of the loop with the loop hanging outside the flame and watch the loop carefully and watch until it looks dry. When it looks dry, then you stick the whole thing into the flame again to sterilize it. That's how we prevent aerosols. So that's our liquid sample on the slide. Now we need to get a colony, something more solid onto the slide. And to do that, you need to resuspend the cells in some kind of liquid. Uh, ideally, you want to use some kind of uh, buffer to prevent any kind of osmotic changes. But in our case, we're going to use water. And the easiest way is to turn on the tap water and grab your loop, a loop full of water, grab yourself a loop full of liquid, okay? Place that on, on the slide, okay? Now, if you shake like me, you might want to brace your loop. Now, this, this is just water. I'm not going to worry about aerosols. I'm going to stick it right into the flame and sterilize it. Okay, we got a loop full of water. Now we need to go to the plate and grab the colony. You're not going to scrape up the colony, you're just going to touch the colony of interest. You want to see little to none in a loop after you touch the colony. So you want to crack the plate briefly, test the auger away from any kind of growth, make sure the loop's cool. Go to the colony of interest and just touch it. Okay? If your colony's hard, I mean dry looking, you might have to scrape to get some cells. But most of the colonies you're working with will be a little bit moist and just touching it so nothing enough cells onto the loop. And then you're gonna take those cells and you're going to transfer them to your drop of water, okay? And you're going to mix
fix it up, you'll see a slight cloud come up and spread this one out. This one you want to make sure you spread out really well into a nickel size shape as possible, as much as possible. Okay. And now you've got a lot of cells and liquid in this loop. You want to prevent aerosols. So do not put the loop right into the flame. You want to put the loop just outside the flame, heating it up quickly, but to watch and dry out the, the loop. Once your loop looks dry, then place the loop into the flame to sterilize it. Okay. You can place your loop down onto the metal tank by the Bunsen burner. Get out of your way. Now you have your samples applied to the slide, we now have to heat fix or fix the cells to the slide so they don't wash off during the staining process. Before you can do that, you must allow your cell, your liquid to evaporate, so air dry. You can quickly dry it by warming it up gently, okay, but not so much that it boils, okay. You want to make sure it's completely air dry before you heat fix. Now I'm not going to skip that step and go right to heat fixing. You have these clothespins. This will protect you from burning yourself when you're heat fixing it. Okay, so place your slide into the clothespin. And when you're heat fixing it, you want to go rapidly because you do not want to burn yourself. You want to go lengthwise, not shortwise, okay? Go to the flame. So go lengthwise, touch your hand. Lengthwise, hand. Notice how fast I'm going. Do not go slow. It's a good way to burn yourself. And you do this until it stings a little bit. It's uncomfortable. And you stop. You have just now denatured a few proteins on the outside surface of the cells which have been attached to the slide, just like you do when you cut down, when you cook egg whites, they can stick to the pan when you heat them up, same idea. But you're not heating it so much that the cells burst and leaving cell debris behind. Okay, that's heat fix now. Now you just place your slide onto the staining rack. This flame needs to be turned off before using any kind of stains because the alcohol is involved in the staining process. So turn off the burn. Okay, I always have some water going here when I'm staining, but if there's too many slides on the staining rack, you can go ahead and use the squirt bottle of DI water as needed. Okay. On the bench tops, you'll find kits, staining kits, and a collection of various kinds of reagents used in various staining procedures. Today, we're doing the gram stain, and so we're going to need first the primary stain, the crystal violet. It's labeled as CV in this case. That's our primary stain. We need a mordant or a fixing reagent. In this case, we call it iodine. And so that's our mordant. We're then, then going to need a de-stain, the primary stain. And our de-stain in this case is 95% ethanol. And then finally, to counter stain, we're going to add saffron. Okay, so we're using four reagents plus water. So first stain is the primary stain. In this case, for the gram stain, the crystal violet. Obviously, it's just a rubber bottle. You just want to do is flood and lit your slide with your stain. Okay. And you let that sit for one minute. It has now been a minute. All I want you to do is just dump off the excess and don't bother rinsing. Okay. The reason for this is to allow leftover dye there to complex with the iodine. It's a very important step. Now you want to do is add iodine again, just flood the slide. You can actually sort of flood it off, the iodine, the crystal violet off with the iodine, but just let it sit for another minute. And that basically is complexing with the crystal violet within the cell walls so that it's harder for it to decolorize with the decolorization step. <clears throat> so it's been a minute. Here at this step, you want to make sure you rinse really well. And when you're rinsing, rinse from the top down, do not let the water hit your smears directly. You can, work, you can actually wash off your smears if you do that. If you're using the bottle, definitely make sure that you only put the stream of water at the top of the slide and not on your smears. Otherwise, you will wash your cells off your slide. Okay. So now my slide has been washed and it's ready for decolorization. And today we're just going to do the tying decolorization step. And so all to do this, you want to make sure your slide is flat on your, on your staining rack and you want to flood your slide with the alcohol and count to 15, 10 to 15 seconds. So 15 to 10 seconds, then you want to stop the decolorization by washing it gently with water. 
That's our decolorization. And now we need a counter stain. In this case, so after this step, all the gram positive cells will be st still purple from crystal violet, and all the other cells, the gram negative cells, will be colorless because they have been washed out. The crystal violet has been washed out of the cells. So now we want to do is flood the slide with the saffron and let it sit there for a minute to two minutes. Once that's done, you want to very gently wash this and just briefly, don't wash it too much. You can wash the saffron out of the gram negative cells. Okay, after it's been rinsed gen gently, you want to put it down on a towel. You can grab yourself a pen wipe if you'd like and pat the surface. Okay, no wiping. Wiping will pull your slails out, but you can pat the surface. Okay, once it's completely dry, you can then go look at this in the microscope. And since we're looking for a bacteria, we're going to look at this at 1000x. Okay.